what they've done. Yet they hold it together because we do not understand, or we do, we, bad word, we do not comprehend what we're dealing with. When they don't respond to you, they are declaring war on you. When they come after you, they are using the Hague and Geneva Convention rules and completely ignoring anything under the Constitution and completely ignoring anything under the common law other than what they need to make money. We've run over time, but I want to cover two more things, please. Uh, if we can, uh, please cover two more things and then uh, I'm going to uh, ask for your questions. One is authority and the other is jurisdiction. So I'll try and cover authority quickly and then I want to cover jurisdiction. Authority is 262 under positive law. I'm going to rip through this because we, we're running out of time. So authority is an exclusive form of property being the right of use to do or act in a particular way which is ultimately derived from a valid claim of divine right of use. In other words, authority is ecclesiastical private property. That's what authority is. It's ecclesiastical private property. Now, what, how do we mean that and what do we mean by that? Well, because the meaning of the word authority comes from two words, octor and ritus. And octor is listed under 2988, as is rit ritus, so I won't go through the whole thing. But when you add octor and ritus to get authority, you effectively have the ecclesiastical ritual or ceremony, custom, right of usage of deeds, writings, knowledge, investigation, teaching, advising, promoting, proposing, and so on. So authority is ecclesiastical private property. That's what it is. Now, 2990. As authority is by definition divine property, authority is always vested into sacred office and not the man, woman, spirit, the higher office. Now, by definition, 2994, by definition, any official who refuses to produce their oath and be bound by it has no authority because an oath is fundamental to an office. It's fundamental to holding an office. An office is ecclesiastical. Therefore, when they don't produce their oath, when they refuse to be bound by it, they have no authority. In fact, in 2993, there is no such thing as secular authority. There is no such thing. Nor are the claimed of legitimate authority except by divine right. When they reject it, when they denounce ecclesiastical source or the obligations of honour, duty and oath, there is an absurdity without validity. They null and void from the beginning any authority they have. When a judge says to you, my authority is through the Constitution. No, it's not. Your authority is ecclesiastical. It is, a, it is a claim of divine right. Your authority is purely ecclesiastical, as is your office. And if you reject that, you have no authority. You have none, by definition. So I look forward to you reading this section of authority and seeing it, because it is extremely powerful when you see the true meaning of, of authority and then the function of agent, principle, and obligation. And let's move on to jurisdiction, and then we'll wrap up for questions. Okay. Jurisdiction is covered under Article 283, 284, 285, and 286. Uh, we're still finishing the back end here, so I'm just going to cover a couple of things on jurisdiction, and then we're going to cover uh, personal jurisdiction, territorial, and subject matter. So jurisdiction, 3092, is the authority, claim rights and power of one or more officials to review, administer and issue certain decrees, prescripts, statutes and ordinances for a given juridic person or society. And ju jurisdiction most frequently applies to the authority of a court to hear and adjudicate a matter, particularly in the, va in the valid publication of ordinances. Now, the, 
Definition is important. The word jurisdiction comes from two words, euro, meaning to swarm. All right, Frank, are you there? I think we lost Frank, so hang in there, everyone. See if we can get him back real quick. All right, while we're waiting for Frank to come back, uh, just as a reminder, if you press star 8 on the phone line to ask a question, you'll be placed in the queue. And uh, looks like we have several questions from the chat. Uh, let's, we've got good uh, format going, question in all of the case, and then proper case for your questions following that. And it looks like we have Frank back. Let's see if we can get him. Sorry, Terry. Don't know what yeah. happened. <laughs> sure. All right. There you go. Thank you. This is just the last, last bit, and then um, then I want to cover. Jurisdiction is something that that everyone that faces court at some point goes and reads, and in terms of conversations, it is an area that has been thoroughly investigated over and over again by many many people. But when you look at jurisdiction. One of the things that has, I believe, not been brought forward is that for each of the jurisdictions that they claim as essential, there is an associated claim of right upon which it is founded. And unless that claim of right is revealed and named, the arguments of personal jurisdiction or territorial jurisdiction or subject matter jurisdiction are largely inert. So when you look at Article 283 and you look at things like Canon 3097, when you look at that summary, you find that personal jurisdiction is based on the, uh, and unfortunately it, it, it has got two words, it looks like jus in remover, it's not, it's jus in rem, without a space between the word over. Jus in rem, jus in rem, is the claim of right that's used for personal jurisdiction, which is to claim ownership of a thing. That's what ultimately is, claim ownership of a thing. You're seeing rem, control of a thing. Territorial jurisdiction is based on the claim of right, jus gentium, the law of nations. But that is the private law, the private international law. There it is. Territorial jurisdiction is merely uh, the cover of private international law. And subject matter jurisdiction is the jus in personum. Now, people, when they do make connection to claims of right, being the underpinning fabric, that is what the Roman courts are using to establish their jurisdiction or make their jurisdiction on the presumption if you don't uh, object to and counter their claim, then it stands. Uh, what you find, that is the weak point in jurisdiction. It's why when you find in their documents, jus in rem, jus gentium, and jus in personum are never, never mentioned in the same breath as person jurisdiction, territorial jurisdiction, and subject matter jurisdiction. Because if anyone got the two together, if anyone made sense of what's underpinning jurisdiction, then one can claim it. And let me show you, for example. Ukrainian law has three jurisdictions as well. 
divine jurisdiction based on the claim of jus divinum, divine law. Society jurisdiction based on jus civitatis, being a member of the society. And consent jurisdiction based on jus consensum, which is the consent grants us jurisdiction. And that is uh, effectively jus being spirit, civitatis being body, consensum being mind. Guess what? In their same system, they use the same. Uh, Yus, uh, in Rem, uh, they are dealing with um, the uh, spirit, Yus Gentium. Um, they're dealing with the body. And Yus uh, Personum, they're dealing with the mind. So when they claim personal jurisdiction, we challenge their claim of right with divine jurisdiction. When they claim Yus in Rem, we claim Yus Divinum. Their claim of right is being challenged. Their title is being challenged. They cannot proceed. Because all they've got to proceed with is claim of right. That's what they're using against us. I want to talk about jurisdiction more again. I've, I've rushed it and I've cut a few corners here. But I, I urge you to have a look at the progress of this. I'm sorry if you find typos like the one I mentioned. But again, I hope tonight is evidence of just how much work has gone into the canons of, uh, of uh, positive law and how this is a resource not only to deal with the present injustice of the Roman cult system, but also a foundation of law that allows us to move forward. So with that, I'm going to stop talking. I look forward to your questions, uh, whether they are through the, the system or whether I'm speaking to you live. Thanks very much. Wonderful. Thank you, Frank. Uh, am I coming in loud and clear? Yep, loud and clear. Okay, very good. Well, let's go to the phone lines first. We have Northeast Texas. We'll unmute. Be hearing them. Hello, Northeast hello? Texas. Yes, hello. hello. Yeah, we can hear you. Frank, Hi. Can you hear? Yes, hear them loud and clear. Hi. Hello, Northeast Texas. Not we'll hearing anything come through. Yeah. No, uh, we'll let them um, get back in the queue with a star eight, and uh, we'll go to the questions here from the uh, chat. Do you know uh, anything about the direction of writing? Right to left, left to right, top to bottom, and its significance, if any, in the ancient. Writing. Yeah, look, you see um, you see this in the position of signatures, um, the concept of a signature being um, uh, to the left, to the right, or to the centre, uh, so that a signature to um, uh, the left being uh, in the um, public, to the right being in the private, and to the centre being ecclesiastical. Uh, you find that you get... Um, um, positions of things in terms of the, the top right or the top left or the centre, again, being um, significant to them. These are all rituals and customs that they play over and over. The same as the use of colour. Uh, we've got sections there on uh, one heaven. When we talk about um, the origin of the ecclesiastical deeds, we talk about colour in there as well. These are all parts of their system. I guess what I'm trying to highlight tonight is that while their system of law has an evolution, it has a provenance, and we can see that there are remnants in many ways to the present day of these ancient customs. What's happened is that the present people in their system are so ignorant of their past that they are perfectly happy to run on inter private international law and claim that procedure is more important than the principles of law itself and have no problem with that. They have no problem with the idea that there is secular authority. They have no problem with the idea that their authority stays intact <clears throat> even if they're in dishonour. They, they have no problem in not providing their oath and refusing to give their oath and still claiming they have jurisdiction. When you're dealing with such idiocy, such uh, mental illness, such madness, the ritual elements that you see... In, uh, in particularly in the lawyers and scriveners and notaries, it really is less important. 
what is more important is 